officially, your boy is a United States citizen. What's up, guys? It is your boy, Jerome, and it has been a long time since we've gotten to talk, and I'm sorry about that. Today, I just wanted to talk to you guys about the process it takes for someone like me, an immigrant, to become a U.S. citizen. Now, I know that sounds like a really weird, strange topic, but I have my citizenship exam today, and if I pass, I will officially be a U.S. citizen. Now, to talk about this, we gotta go all the way back. Rewind the clock 25 years. Back in August of 1996, I was born in India to my two parents, Antonio and Amuda. I have one older sister, her name is Jenini, who is about three years older than me. Now, we had a pretty good life in India, but my dad's dream was always to come here to America. So when I was two years old, what do we do? We packed up all of our stuff, and that's right, we moved to Japan. That's right, Indian family living in Japan, we don't know any of the language, we're actually the first ever foreign family to live in this town. It was, it was so crazy that we were the first ever foreigners in this town. We were so out of place in this town that on my sister's first day of first grade, the local news station came and followed her around, interviewed her. That was what was on the nightly news that day. Fast forward about four years, I start kindergarten there. My sister and I are both fluently speaking Japanese all the time, but there's a problem. The problem is it's hard for Indian families to grow up in Japan, as you would expect. I remember this vividly. I came home from kindergarten one day and my mom was standing there with one of her friends and they asked me how my day was. I very excitedly, I tell my mom's friend how my day was the whole time in Japanese, and my mom's patiently waiting for me to explain it to her after I'm finished. So I finish, and my mom goes, okay, Jerome, now tell me in Tamil. And I look at her, and I'm like, I just, I don't know the words to, to explain it again, so I'm, I'm just gonna go play in my room. It broke my mom's heart. And I feel bad because even though I don't know what I was doing or I don't really understand, I feel bad. And that was it. In that moment, my parents decided we have to go back to India. We need to raise our kids to be Indian. But there was an interesting opportunity that just so happened to come up in America. So my parents, again, took a very big risk. We packed up all of our stuff. When I was six years old, we moved to a small town called Maryville, Tennessee. Now, we moved to Maryville in 2002, and I basically lived there for my entire life. I went to elementary school there, middle school, high school. I went to college just right down the street at the University of Tennessee in Knoxville. But we can save all those stories for another time. I'm getting distracted. I should be telling you about what it takes to become a citizen. So once we moved to the U.S., we were here on a work visa, what's called an H-1B. So this visa essentially lets foreigners work in the U.S. legally. So that would be my dad. Now, he's got three dependents under him. Of course, my mom, my sister, and me. And we're all allowed to legally be here under his work visa. Now, when that visa expires, you essentially have three choices. One, you can go back home. Two, you can ask your company to extend that visa for maybe an additional couple of years. Or three, you can apply for a green card and try to become a permanent resident of the United States. In our case, we were lucky enough that my dad's company sponsored him and applied for our green card so we could stay here forever. But it's not as simple of a process as you would expect. We applied for our green card in 2005 and it took us nine years Nine years of every year going and getting our fingerprints made, going and having to get our temporary visas renewed over and over, having to get a work permit so we could legally work in the United States. It's a lot of stuff. And for me and my sister, when we became college age and started applying to a bunch of different universities, we were always promised a lot of scholarship and then at the last second they would say, 
oh, you don't have your green card. We actually can't give you any of these scholarships. It was, uh, it was a very difficult time back then. Okay, so we finally got the green card. What next? Well, next, you have to wait five whole years until you can apply for your citizenship. So, life goes on. I graduated college, I got a great job, I moved to Johnson City, but any time I would leave the country to go visit my sister in Japan or just take a vacation, I had to get a visa. And it was always just such a hassle. You would have to spend so much money to get these visas. You would have to do a ton of paperwork and always have to go in and get your fingerprints made and all sorts of different stuff. It's just annoying. But finally, the day came when I could finally apply for my citizenship, April 2020. Hmm, what was important about April 2020? That's right, the world was hit by a global pandemic and everything shut down. So after waiting all of this time to finally apply for my citizenship and get it, all of the US immigration field offices were closed and again, I would have to wait another two years before my application would even be processed. Fast forward to about a month ago, my application finally got processed and I got my letter stating that I would finally be taking my citizenship exam. And if I passed, I'd get to take the oath and officially become a US citizen. That's today. That's right. Right now, as we speak, I'm about to go to the immigration office, take my exam, and hopefully be a US citizen. All right, I'll be right back. See you guys soon. <laughs> finally at the uh, the citizenship place, but it looks like there's no cameras allowed inside, which is a little disappointing because I wanted to film the uh, actual oath ceremony for you guys. But I guess I can't, unfortunately, but uh, I'll be right back. All right, so that took a little bit longer than expected, but officially, your boy is a United States citizen, 20 years in the making. And it finally happened. And it's a nice, nice windy day. We got the flag blown in the background. I feel extremely patriotic right now. Well, I did it. I am officially, as of earlier today, I guess, a US citizen. <laughs> 20 years in the making, and I finally did it. I'm officially a US citizen. Can't be happier. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you have questions about immigration or why it took 20 years for me to become a citizen or you know, just wanna educate yourself a little bit more about the immigration process, please put all of that in the comments below and I will look at all of them and answer your questions. Make sure to like this video for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe and share this video with your friends as well. As always, I'm Jerome. And I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.